Righto guys, in this video we're going to spend some time chatting about cars. There's so much out there on um, social media, it gets confusing for a lot of people. Often people buy the, um, the big van and then worry about the car later and vice versa and then you see all the errors and we we're pretty much part of that. So let's um, get into it. Let's... So if you're planning a, a holiday or a long trip or a full-time tour, uh, it's important that you have the right equipment. <clears throat> you, you, you want to be safe, you want to be legal, you want to make it seamless and trouble free really. So there's obviously a minefield of opinions and info out there about tow vehicles and weights in particular. It confuses the hell out of a lot of people, particularly when you're starting out. And we found that. And um, as you know, we started out with a, an Avara. After the weigh-in, we found it, it didn't really cut the mustard for our circumstances long term. Um, so I guess I put this video together to help others navigate um, the vehicle world, just sharing our opinion. Um, it may not suit everyone's needs, but this is just some of the research we found. So is there a perfect vehicle? Absolutely not. It's a bit of a mythical beast. It's all about your circumstances, your budget, and what sort of touring you want to want to do. If you're on the black stuff, um, you can get away with most most vehicles, you know, the uh, dual cabs and all that. So it's pretty easy. I'll give you a couple of um, tips that we looked for when looking for a vehicle. So specific to obviously towing and power and torque is one of the, the big ticket items. Tow capacity is another. GBM, GCM is really important. Tow ball weight is something really important. It obviously comes into your, your GBM. Overall safety and comfort, that's a, a big ticket item as well. So I'll start with the Navara, um, as this was what our experience was in the start. It was a grouse car. It was really capable on the black stuff. We only really had a few issues being really close to the GVM. Um, it claims to have about 140 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque. But as soon as you add the extra features, weights, those those numbers drop considerably, which obviously affects the way it drives and, and the capability. So it's not gonna um, tolerate the tough situations. So we wanted a vehicle to tow a heavy van and be able to go on the beach if required. So although that might have been possible with you know right tire pressures and whatnot, but I just don't think it has the, the torque to get out of the right situations. There's not enough guts under the hood to do it. With the GVM, we found that really challenging. So that, that really um, shot up once we uh, added a few extra bull bars and accessories. So, so the, G, um, the curb weight I think was 1900 and then it's got a GVM of 2910. So our, ours came to 2840. Um, and so we were fully loaded with a family of five and we had hardly anything in the tray. So um, it became really challenging with weights. Um, another popular dual cab is the Ranger, obviously. We see them towing big, big units everywhere. So the, the new tile track appears very capable, has an increased GVM over other models. It has a healthy 184 kilowatts power and 650 newton meters of torque, which is really impressive. But I reckon that will reduce once you add on the extras. Unladen weight is 23.99 kilos, I think it is. Um, it's got a GVM of 33.50 or 3200, depending on which model, which equates to the same pay, uh, payload as all the other models. You can get a decent GVM upgrade to assist with your travelling needs as required. As the Navara, they're really reluctant just because of the chassis as well. The other Ute may suit people's knees is the Isuzu D-Max. It's a simple engine. It's a three litre turbo. It's got 140 kilowatts Newton meters of torque, 450 Newton meters of torque, sorry. They've also introduced a, a 1.9 litre four cylinder. Don't make the mistake, don't waste your money. It's no good for towing. If you want your rig to get anywhere, you get rid of it. The LSU's got a 2100 curb weight and a 3100 GVM, which obviously equates to 995 kilos of payload, which which is pretty much the one tonner, obviously. 
Made it to top to three and a half ton brake towing capacity. But you need to reduce your payload obviously by the time you have your tow ball weight. Um, you don't want to go over your G GVM and GCM either. Um, that obviously is your, your GCM's your total towing capacity really. So the other car we looked at was the what? Uh, Patrol Y260. Love them or hate them, they're a beast. Um, the tear of the TI model is a 2750 and a GVM 3500. Nissan confuses the hell out of a lot of people with their tow ball download limit. So, and they've got some bullshit adjunct table hidden. It's too hard to find. It's not in the advertising brochure, so it's a bit bit shifty to be honest but if you have a Google search you can have a look <coughs> but if you've got a tow ball weight of 250 kilos then you don't need any other penalty applied to your GVM so you just take off the 250 kilos off your, your overall GVM which is your tow ball weight when you creep over that ball weight the penalty sort of incrementally apply so if you've got a 300 kilo ball weight then you've got to add on an extra I think it's 70 kilos so you got to subtract that um, 300 plus 70 off your GVM. So it's their idea of having a, a bit of a, a safety barrier um, for your GVM. Obviously that gets worse, 350 kilo. I think you take it off 130 kilos extra. And when you've got a, a three and a half ton GVM and your tear weight's 2750, leaves you 750 kilos of payload. Keep in mind the tear weight's the empty car. You need to add on 130 litres of fuel, which actually equates to about 100, just because of the differential. Then obviously, 600 kilos, give or take for payload. Then you got your tow ball weight, 300 kilos, plus a penalty. Then you're left with, with stuff all before you obviously sit in it and uh, throw any other crap in the back so it, it's, uh, it's not even room for a beer so GVM upgrades essential the fuel economy um, obviously the fuel economy is pretty thirsty but you do you might save some money um, with the initial purchase price um, but you know, you're looking at a patrol 100k, you might save compared to um, the cruiser and avoiding the Toyota tax. Oh, what a feeling! Um, you know, cruiser might come in at 130, give or take. The 300 series is between 130 and 150 if you can get them. Um, but then, obviously, you know, you've got to add on stuff to that to get it um, touring worthy. So it leaves you on to the 200 series, what we got. We wanted a car that would last, handle off-road. And the 200 series fitted that description for us. Um, the stock model clearly needs adds on like any other car. Um, you can't get away with a touring rig without doing extras. And they all add up. So obviously the 200 series had an unprecedented success. And the, the cruiser range has been you know, the power horse for, for many years and, and not too many issues. We bought the GXL, which is sort of the mid model. Um, you can get the VX, which adds leather and a different um, head unit, which is grouse. Um, but yeah, it's got a, a different um, increase in power in, in recent models. So around 200 kilowatts um, of power at 3600 rpms and 650 newton meters of torque clearly this is not the case with ours could be due to a bit of the age of the car but also the add-ons so we got our car tuned they do need a tune when you get them claw back some of your power that you lose when you add on weight um you can see that in a video i'll um i'll put the link down below them um, but we really got the tune done for for fuel economy really um the gxl comes in at 2740 for a curb weight with a, a GVM of 3350. So that was one of our biggest problems because it only leaves you 650 kilos of payload. So this car needs a GVM upgrade like us, just to tow. 
Um, but we're happy the engine could handle it and it's a, a strong built car, obviously. We've got a 3800 GVM upgrade, which um, 7300 GCM, which obviously improves our ability to tow our setup and obviously have room to, to put stuff in the back or on the roof. Um, ideally, I would have gone up to the 4200 upgrade, but obviously that comes with increased cost and then the resi shocks um, obviously require a bit more maintenance and work. Um, people have often commented about engine dusting with the 200 series. Um, I reckon if you're on infrequent dusty roads, I think you're sweet, but as soon as you do genuine off-road stuff, um, it may pay you upgrade the airbox. We did it just for um, longevity of the car. Um, we put in a FATS airbox um, with a, a round oil filter and um, we just want to get long-term durability and function out of the engine. Um, we also upgraded the, the diesel filter and catch can. Again, I'm not sure if it's essential, but we did it. Um, it depends where you live and, and what sort of driving you do, I reckon. But it's just extra um, protection for your engine and your investment, really. So I think it's a, a definitely a good thing to do, just get longevity out of your engine. Um, and give, you know, given that it was only probably around 700 bucks, it's probably worthwhile. Um, the only other things we did to the car, we changed the wheels and tyres. We've got 285 70-17s um, with ROH vapour. I reckon that looks sick. Um, we looked at the Hurricanes, um, the King Hurricanes, but they weren't available for a couple of weeks. But um, whatever wheel you get, um, just make sure you take into consideration your um, your GVM upgrade and getting an appropriate load rated tyre. I think ours, the vapours go up to 1500 a wheel, so it's significant. Um, the other thing we did, you know, it really comes down to interiors with your car and comfort, as I said at the start. Like, you know, you're looking at spending hours in the car each day sometimes, so, um, you know, comfort is, a, is essential. So, um, one of the things we did was look at uh, entertainment unit at the front, so, the one that Toyota comes in, it's poxy as. Um, it's not intuitive, it's not modern, um, and this is a 2018 car. So, um, we opt to just upgrade that. I think the 300 series is clearly a lot better, a uh, bit more intuitive and interactive. Um, obviously, most people want uh, Apple CarPlay or Android or whatever these days. Jeez, these bumps are getting to me now. Yeah, so it's all about making sure that the, the entertainment is good for you and the family because they've got to put up with it for just as long as you do. So um, the other thing, you know, you're thinking about um, interiors, looking obviously um, your comfort of your seats and stuff like that. I said I'd never buy a car again that wasn't leather. I did because it was a bit cheaper. Um, but ideally I'd love to get leather in the front particularly. Um, but having said that, we've got three rat bag kids that, you know, snack every 20 minutes. So our back seat's got covers on it, so it's the front. Um, and we've just got the waterproof um, neoprene stuff. Wipes off, it's sweet for kids. So they're probably one of the best investments you can do, whether you've got leather or, or cloth seats anyway. Um, the other stuff I reckon with, you know, another car, obviously popular is the 79 series. Um, clearly a great rig it's very popular um the other thing it's a, it's just a bit dated clearly so again love it or hate it um to me if you've got to wind down your bloody window or you get one cup holder for a car that's over 100 grand just just doesn't cut it i reckon if you if you're maybe on a farm or something um and just want to mosey around but if you if you're touring around you want comfort um, the only other cars to think about really is your, um, or vehicles to think about. Um, you know, some people obviously reckon the truck's the way to go. And clearly a truck for a GVM um, and towing capacity is the best. Um, it will do it all day long. They do it all the way up and down every highway around the country. But clearly it's not practical for a lot of people. It limits where you can go, where you can park. And it certainly, um, may not be that comfortable so you can consider a truck but i don't know it's not one for us so now that you've gone out and chosen your tow vehicle here's a couple of essential modifications to make sure you stay safe and legal and here's the hidden cost that no one ever tells you about 
So as indicated earlier, GVM is a huge issue for a lot of vehicles, particularly in the dual cab space. As soon as you look to tow over three ton, it can have a significant impact on your ability to load up and tour this great country. GVM upgrades are available pre-registration and that's the best way to do it at second stage manufacturing and that gives you a nationwide certificate. You can get them done post-registration but that depends on individual uh, state and territory laws whether they're recognized coming from another state. GVM upgrades can cost you anywhere between four and a half up to eleven thousand dollars which will have a significant impact on your budget when considering how much you're going to tow. Another significant cost can be bull bars or bar work. Bull bars, rear bars can cost you anywhere between four and a half to six and a half thousand dollars fitted in 2023. Are they acquired? Absolutely not, but they will protect the front end of your vehicle, particularly if you're traveling at dawn, dusk and at night. Definitely worthwhile. So the next big ticket item are wheels and tires. People don't often think about too much more than the aesthetics of the wheel. However, when you start looking at GVM upgrades and towing over three ton, it's crucial that you get an appropriately load rated tire. Anything around the 1500 kilo mark per tire is a good place to start and it will keep you in good stead to look after the weight of your vehicle. Tires are essential. Most vehicles when they come out of the factory will come out with standard road tires. If you're looking to tour around or go off-road, you'll need a decent all-terrain tyre. I'd steer clear of the mud tyres, they're too loud and too much road noise when you're on day-to-day -day touring, but you can get a good set of all-terrains anywhere from 1500 to two grand. The next big ticket item that we found, tow mirrors. Absolutely, you can get some cheap ones that are clip-on for a couple of hundred bucks and they will suffice the majority of people. If you want it more of a permanent fixture, something a bit more secure, stable, and less easy to pinch, you're looking at anywhere from $700 to $900. But having done this in the past, they look great and they're much more stable when driving. Before you even leave the dealership, you need to start thinking about the safety of your vehicle and the electrics that you'll need before you tow your van or boat away. Electric brakes are essential by law, particularly when you're towing heavy loads. You'll need a decent electric brake system, so most people end up with the Tow Pro, plus or minus an Anderson plug. And this can set you back anywhere from $350 up to $600, and can obviously add another cost that people don't recognize. Another essential modification to your tow vehicle, particularly if you're traveling in remote areas, is making sure that you have good communication with other road users, particularly when you're in unfamiliar places. A good UHF will put you in good stead to keep you in good communication to make sure that you stay safe and aware of any other hazards. They're relatively inexpensive and around $300 plus or minus install but most are DIY, so you can give that a go yourself. So now that you've gone and added all this additional weight to your new tow vehicle, another essential modification in my opinion is to get a good tune done. You wanna claw back some of that lost torque and power and make sure that your vehicle is tip top shape when it hits the road. A good tune will cost you anywhere from $1,000 up to $1,500 depending on any additional extras. You don't need to add too much for a new vehicle clearly, but if you've got a bit of an older rig, you might wanna have a good clean out, look at the exhaust system, and make sure that your vehicle is ready to go and you're gonna get the best performance out of your new tow rig. So clearly this is just a short list of some of the potential modifications that you can do to your new tow rig before hitting the road. Obviously, you can go a bit further and start looking at dual battery systems, fridges, and any other electrics you like, whether it's inverters or lithium batteries. However, it does add up and it can have a significant impact on your overall budget. The main thing you want to do is make sure that you stay safe, legal, 
and have the right equipment so you can get out of any sticky situations when you're on the road. I hope that helps. But I think the cruiser so far has been the pick of the bunch. Uh, what would be my dream car? Jeez, that's a tough one. Uh, I reckon, for my mind, I'd really like to chop, chop 200. Um, I might, you know, later on look at something back in the the Ute, well, the dual cab space, effectively. Um, I'd like to obviously put a tinny on the top. That's the next uh, next purchase. Um, but you know, we've got to think about the kids. We obviously thought about um, having. We got three boys, so we separated the two, so save the bickering. Um, so it gives them space in the middle to obviously stretch out. As soon as you start going to the dual cab, then you start um, obviously put them all, everyone together, you've got less space, less comfort. So it's all about your situation. If, you, if you've if only got one or two in the back, it, it's perfectly fine, So or none. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth considering um, a, a dual cab, because obviously you can get out the um, canopies and, and you can set them up the way you like so um, I don't know the other car I'd really like I've seen a couple of them floating around the F350s the F trucks are just sick honesty do your research don't don't necessarily buy your van before your car um, if you're starting out obviously think about your situation and what you've got um, think about your budget clearly it's a, a big Im impact on um, what you end up with you definitely want to do your research make sure you've got um, your safety in mind your gvm your weights all that stuff and then you just got to obviously look at what you were sort of touring or trips you want to do uh, but hopefully that helps guys um the idea is just to share a bit of our research um there's a whole lot of clearly dual cabs out there that um are towing and stuff no doubt a lot of them are overweight and then they get on the social media and start getting panic when people start getting pulled over or or they start getting fined and tested um, but you're supposed to do this research before you get going. So that would be my advice. We obviously got our set up way to start and we found ourselves in a bit of a pickle. So hopefully, you know, obviously it depends what you want to do in our GVM, but you don't have to change it straight away. Um, but if you're looking at, you know, obviously the retirement plan or, or setting up for full-time travel, um, do your research first and um, get out there and enjoy it. But we're happy with the 200 series, it's sick, it's comfy, and it, it certainly does our, our needs. So um, I'll be keen to see more 300 series come out in the near future once all the COVID layovers finished. But it's definitely um, it'll be interesting to see the longevity of that car too. All right guys, I'm gonna head off and uh, get off these bumpy, dusty roads.